Hello and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. In this video, I'm going to be going through the surface area to volume ratio and adaptations organisms have for this. If you are new here, then just click subscribe so you don't miss any of the latest videos. So let's first consider single celled organisms like the amoeba here in the image. So some organisms are only made up of one cell. For that reason, they have a relatively large surface area compared to their tiny volume. And that means they don't need any special adaptations to make sure they get the gases in and out of the cell that they need. Compared to multicellular organisms like us, animals made up of absolutely millions if not trillions of cells, there are so many cells and some of the cells right in the center of your body are so far away from the outside that we have special exchange surfaces and organs with adaptations to make sure we meet the needs of our body in terms of gas exchange and absorption or removal of waste. So let's have a look at this relationship of surface area compared to volume. I'm going to do this example here with three cubes of different sizes. One cube has a length of 10 millimeters, another of 20, another of 30. And what you could be asked to do in the GCSE is to calculate the surface area, the volume, or the surface area to volume ratio. Now the surface area, you work out the area of one side. So that'd be the length times the width. And because it's a square or cube, that'd be 10 by 10. Then we times it by six because a cube has six sides. So for the first one, that'd be 10 times 10 times six. For the volume, this is three dimensions. So that would be the length times the width times the height. So in this case, for the first cube, 10 times 10 times 10, which gives us 1000. Finally, the surface area to volume ratio. What that means is you divide the surface area by the volume. So that's what we can see here in this final column. 600 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.6. And then we've got the two other surface area to volume ratios as well. And the pattern that we have for this is the larger the cube was, the smaller the ratio. So what that means in terms of biology is the bigger an organ is or the bigger an organism is, the smaller its surface is compared to its volume. And that means it won't be able to get enough exchange of substances happening to meet its needs. So the larger an organism is, that means they will need to have some special exchange surface adaptations or an organ. So those adaptations that we see are in large multicellular organisms to help meet those needs of potentially gas exchange, absorption from digestion, or it could be removal of waste. And the adaptations that we see are always the same. They must have a large surface area to provide more space for substances to transport across. They need to have a thin membrane and this is so it's a very short distance or short diffusion pathway. They need to have an efficient blood supply nearby. And this is so that whatever is being transported can quickly be transported away to maintain a concentration gradient, which is essential for diffusion. Lastly, in animals, they have a ventilation system. And this is also to help maintain the concentration gradient in gas exchange. So let's have a look at the examples that you need to know about in particular. The small intestines in animals are covered in these projections called villi. And that is where digested food products are absorbed. So if we think about that first adaptation, the large surface area, that's because they are folded but also on the outside of the villi, we have these micro villi, which have even more tiny, tiny projections. And all of these foldings provide a surface for digested food to be absorbed. It's very, very thin wall. It's only made up of this one layer of micro villi. So that's our short diffusion path. We can't see in this image, but on the inside of each villi, we have a capillary network. 
and that is so as soon as any digested food products are absorbed, they get transported away in the blood to maintain that concentration gradient. Next, if we think about the lungs in animals, specifically the alveoli. Now, for a large surface area, that is produced or maintained by the fact that there are millions of alveoli in both the left and the right lungs. The thin membrane is due to the fact that each alveoli wall is very, very thin. It's only made up of one layer of cells. Again, we can see that they're surrounded by this capillary network to maintain the concentration gradients because as soon as oxygen diffuses from the alveoli into the capillary, it's transported away in the blood. There is also the ventilation system to maintain the concentration gradients. As we inhale, we're bringing in oxygen rich air into the alveoli. And as we exhale, we're removing carbon dioxide rich gas as well. And that is how we are maintaining that concentration gradient. Fish also exchange gases, but because they're underwater, the adaptations they have have to account for the fact that there's so much less oxygen dissolved in water than there is available in the air. Again, they have a large surface area, but instead of alveoli, they have gills, and on top of all of these gills are this thin, thin membrane called a lamellae, and that is where the gases are exchanged. Those lamellae are very thin to provide a short diffusion distance, and we can see each of those lamellae have this network of capillaries. The ventilation system in fish, now they don't breathe in as such, but what happens is they open their mouth and the water goes in through their mouth and then it comes out the side of their head where it flows over the gills. And the direction that the water flows over the gills is the opposite direction to which the blood is flowing through the capillaries. And because the water which has the oxygen in and the blood is flowing in opposite directions, that helps to maintain this concentration gradient across the whole lamellae. Roots and leaves also have types of exchanges. The leaves will be exchanging gases and the roots are going to be absorbing water and mineral ions. So both have a large surface area. The roots have these root hair cells, which are these long projections coming out of the cell to increase the surface area. There's also a really thin membrane in the root hair cells, which is going to reduce the diffusion pathway. And leaves, which is where gas exchange occurs. Leaves are very thin, so again, there's a short diffusion pathway. So those are the adaptations that multicellular organisms have on their exchange surfaces or organs to make sure that they can meet the demands of the organism. I hope you found that helpful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up.